So tangent to polar curves. Okay, recall uh, parametric curves. In parametric curves, we have uh, y dx, if you recall, in terms of uh, the parameter t, uh, we end up having dy dt in the numerator and then dx dt in the denominator. Since uh, the relationship between parametric and, um, and polar is such uh, very close to, uh, we can say that similarly uh, replace the parameter t with a parameter theta um, we we end up having for the uh, for the polar curve we end up having dy dx equals dy d theta over dx d theta, like so. So uh, <coughs> we are at this point, which we use the same definition that we had uh, for uh, <coughs> for parametric curves applied it to the polar. Where is the difference? Well, the difference is the conversion um, in polar. First of all, by definition, in polar uh, coordinates, or I'm sorry, coordinates uh, would be the wrong word, in polar curves, we have R is a function of theta, as we saw last time. So, uh, and then, and we have also the conversion. And the conversion was we converted um, x, we wrote it as r cosine theta, and y was r sine theta. Okay? So when we take the derivative dy d theta and dx d theta, we need to keep in mind that r now is a function of theta. Might as well write it as f of theta for r times cosine theta and f of theta for r times sine theta. And it becomes clear that we need to use the product rule when we differentiate x and y with respect to theta. Okay? So, <clears throat> so let's differentiate x and y with respect to to theta. So let's see what is dx d theta. Well dx d theta by the product rule it will be um, dr d theta times cosine theta plus and actually it will be minus uh, because we have r times negative sine theta. So we end up having dr d theta cos sine theta minus r sine theta. Okay. Likewise, dy d theta will be dr d theta um, times sine theta plus r, and the derivative of the sine is the cos sine. Okay. So putting these together up here, we end up having the following expression, dy dx. Instead of dy d theta, I'll take what I have here, and I have dr d theta sine theta plus r cosine theta. 
and instead of dx d theta, I have this expression, dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. So this is the end result, and I kind of jumped last time, and I just gave you the uh, the expression in the box. It said, okay, this is the first derivative. What what this relate to the tangent? Uh, as we know that the the, uh, the derivative of the curve will be the slope of the tangent. So this is the slope of the tangent. to the polar curve. Now, kind of, there is uh, a little bit of uh, uh, ambiguity here because, not ambiguity, actually, that won't be the right word, but we're talking about the polar curve, yet we are here we're looking at the y dx. So, obviously, everything will be expressed in terms of r and theta rather than uh, the y and the x. But, or the overall, I mean, the polar curve, we can go ahead and replace it on a on a Cartesian system, uh, putting the pole at the origin, and the slope to the curve at any given point will be this expression, the y dx. Okay? So, um, having said that, let's look at uh, a special case. Well, before we move on, let's talk about horizontal tangent and vertical tangent, because we're going we're gonna to look into these cases. Well, the horizontal tangent required that the y dx equals zero, right? And the vertical tangent required that either dx dy equals zero or the y dx is undefined. We need division by zero. So um, let's look, so let's write that for horizontal tangent, Okay. If I'm looking at uh, this expression right here on top, okay, I want the numerator to equal zero. So this requires dy d theta, the numerator to equal zero. On the other hand, for vertical tangent, we want the denominator to equal zero. See, we want dx d theta to equal zero. So keep that in mind. Okay, and another uh, special case is what happens if r equals zero? Okay, actually, I need to go. What will be the the slope of the tangent at this point? Well, if I'm looking at this expression in the box, if r equals zero, well, it doesn't mean that the r the theta equals zero. If the r theta is not equal to zero and r equals zero, first of all, our cosine and our sine go away. And then what you have is the r theta divided by itself, and then you have sine theta over cosine theta. So, um, at the pole, remember the pole is uh, where, where r equals zero, We uh, we have the y dx, okay, becomes the r d theta times sine theta over the r d theta cosine theta, and if the r d theta is not equal to zero, well we need that to have, then we end up having tangent theta. Just like that. Everything at the pole when r equals zero, then we have simply tangent theta for the slope of, um, of the tangent. Here we need to be careful, uh, so we need to write uh, if dr d theta is not equal to zero. Otherwise, uh, that it won't work. So, um,
Also, when we're talking about the horizontal tangent, we need also add a little condition here. Again, let me bring the uh, the previous uh, page before. Let's let's uh, the previous page uh, side by side. Let's let's look at this again. Uh, the box on top. Okay. If we want to have horizontal tangent, we want the numerator to equal zero, but we want we don't want the denominator to equal zero, and vice versa. If we want a vertical tangent, we want to have dx d theta equals zero, but we don't want zero divided by zero because it's undefined. So uh, we want dy d theta to not equal zero. So here we need to add two conditions. Okay, in parentheses, this is if dx d theta is not equal to zero, then we have a horizontal tangent. So we have dy d theta equals zero, but dx d theta is not. And likewise, vertical tangent, we need to have if uh, dx d theta equals zero, but dy d theta shouldn't equal zero. And we'll see an example where this happened when we have both equal zero and we see what to do in this case. Okay, but keep that in mind. So we have condition all over the place, including uh, where r equals zero, we still require that the r d theta to not equal zero. And the following example demonstrate uh, a little bit of that. Let's look at, uh, I'm talking about r equals zero. Uh, let's, let's recall the, uh, the four, the four leaf rows, okay? We did it last time. The four leaf rows was R equal cosine of two theta. Okay, and um, it looks like that. The four leaf rows, uh, we started at the polar axis, this is the pole, this is the polar axis with theta equals zero. Okay, and if, let's see, how did we go? Uh, did we went down or up? We went up first, right? We went up like so, and we came down. And this was the point, so this is theta equals zero, right there, and this is where theta was equal pi over two, right? And then we went, and this is where theta was equal pi. And then we went on one more time, like so. And this is where. So let's draw errors here. Because with the same, with parametric curve, polar curve is not just a curve. It's a curve with a direction. So at this point, this is where theta was equal 3 pi over 2 or 2, and then we completed the deal, and we came back down here where theta was equal 2 pi, okay? The point is, where do we see uh, when r equals 0? Well, if you think about it, we start at 0, we went to pi over 2, halfway through will be pi over 4, right? And then we went from pi over 2 to pi, halfway through would be 3 pi over 4, Pi to 3 pi over 2, halfway through will be 5 pi over 4, and then from 3 pi over 2 to uh, 2 pi, halfway through will be 7 pi over 4. So we are going through r equals 0 basically four times. Okay? Uh, another way to look at it is say, okay, I want uh, at the pole r equals 0. Okay? This, since r equals cosine 2, 2 theta, then this force cosine 2 theta to equal 0. This is 0. Okay, now, two, this happened when 2 theta equals either what? Pi over 2, right? Or 3 pi over 2. But remember, theta goes to from 0 to 2 pi. So 2 theta will go from 0 to 4 pi, to 4 pi. So the next time it will be 
two theta will be equals to uh, 5 pi over 2, and finally 7 pi over 2. Okay, so theta equals pi over 4 divided by 2, uh, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And we observe that result just by tracking th the, the, the four leaf rows, but if we start from zero and we go uh, to pi over two and then two pi and then two, three pi over two and then back to pi, we notice that every time we pass through zero, the angle would be either pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and so on. So you can get, okay, you can obtain the resu this result both analytically but also graphically if you trace the progression of theta, which when we did it last time, that's how we did it, if you remember. So what about, so what about the, uh, the derivative here, the, the slope of the tangent? Well, dy d theta equals uh, tangent theta, and we have two cases for pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, we have, I'm sorry, the first quadrant and third quadrant, the tangent is positive. So this will be 1. And in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, the tangent is negative. So it means that we have either a slope of negative 1 slope equals 1 or negative 1. And the equation of the tangent are, if the slope is 1 or negative 1, because that's the value of the tangent, the they, uh, y-intercept is 0 because we go through the origin. The pole is the origin. So we have y equals x or y equals negative x. Okay, L let's sketch it again so you can see uh, that this is this is correct. I'll, I'll try to sketch it at a little bit larger scale here. And this time I'm sketching it on the xy coordinate system. So, Okay, so this is a four, uh, four leaf rows, or four panel rows, and you can see that the tangent uh, at at the origin, at the pole, this will be uh, the line either theta equals pi over four. Remember, we we said that in a polar curve, in polar coordinate system, r equal a constant is a circle, and theta equal a constant is a line. So this is the line theta equals pi over 4, or in the x, y, and Cartesian system, it would be y equal x. And then the other tangent right here, you can see, is this one. And this line is theta equal, uh, in, it would be 3 pi over 4, or y equals negative x. Okay, so those are the tangents. Okay. What about the other values, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4? Well, that's basically we are repeating. We are repeating the tangents. So pi, pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4 are the same line. So we might as well write uh, pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4, that, and this one will be, 3 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. Okay?